So this is something that I've been contemplating doing for a while now, and I would like to make more videos like this if there would be interest in videos like this. And that is recent video game pickups type videos. Now, I've been going out a lot lately in video game hunting with my mother. See, in the past, you know, I always just kind of ordered off of eBay and Mercari, and some of these games here are from eBay and Mercari still, just because sometimes, hey, you know, when you go out to a retro game shop, sometimes they don't got games that you're looking for. And it's honestly been such a fun and wholesome and just like, I don't know, just like a fun learning experience going out and like retro games hunting with my mom and visiting some of these like retro game stores near me because not only is it fun and just you know it's just so fulfilling getting to support these small businesses around me but it's also really cool getting to go out and see like what interests my mom because as we've been going out like one of the uh, places that we go to it's not only video games right like there's also like figures and like old action figures and posters and movies and just tons of memorabilia but it's also just it also just happens to have a bunch of video games there as well but then the other store that we go to is basically just like entirely video game themed like it's mostly retro video games new video games like it's just like it goes all the way back to the atari all the way up to stuff like the xbox series x and ps5 and of course each of these places also have pokemon cards so i'm not going to include those in this video but if you guys want to see like my most recent pokemon card pickups well then i'd be more than happy to start making videos on those because i'm always picking up training cards period whether it be pokemon cards Yu Gi Oh, dragon ball now before we get into all the pickups i want to switch it up usually i do the patreon and membership shout outs right at the end of the video but instead i wanted to do it towards the beginning just to really shine a light on these people so a massive shout out to all of you in the low baller tier and an even bigger Shout out, thank you to all of you in the big baller tier. My last king of a daddy man in the biggest shout out, thanks to all of you in the G tier. Right Avengers and the Girl, thank you guys so much. You guys are literal legends. I love you. But now, let's look at some video games. So, this is going from the end of January up until now. Since I've never done one of these videos before, I just say, like, you know, we go over the last course, like the last month, month and a half or so. So, the first pickup that I made, now we're not going in order of when I pick these games up. This is just kind of be like a random order because it's kind of hard to keep track of exactly when I purchase these games. Like, I can only kind of think of like a relative time frame. But in terms of January pickups I found this lot on eBay that included three Assassin's Creed games on PS3 and I was looking up and down in my collection I was like hey I don't got these on PS3 yet and I love Assassin's Creed so why not we got Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood as well as Assassin's Creed 3 but with that I realized hey you know it's cool that I got these but there's a certain game missing from this set of two right here and if you know anything about Assassin's Creed you know what that is but that'll be coming up a little bit later next up then I also went ahead and picked up the Arkham Trilogy on PS3 now you guys know me every time that I'm buying a game I only ever buy like the vanilla copy and I actually actually well, give me one second I do indeed have a vanilla copy of of Arkham City right here. It's just that, you know, I wanted the copy that had all the DLC on this because normally I don't care too much about DLC. But the DLC in Arkham City is really substantial, and the fact that it's not on the disc on Arkham City is kind of a hindrance because the only way to get, like, the Catwoman DLC, which is, like, a huge part of the story, and it's very canon, the only way to get it is with a code, but guess what? The code that I have, yeah, it expired back in, oh, when is that? 2021, which was three years ago, and yes, I've tried redeeming it, and for a while, Sony was still accepting, like, expired vouchers. Like, I remember uh, when I bought the God of War collection on PS3, I was able to redeem the PSP games, even though they were like however many years out of date and they still took it but for some reason this did not work so yeah which is pretty sad because when i bought the game of the year edition this one also came with a code for the batman year one animated movie however that one was expired by like i don't know like almost seven years i think oh no i'm sorry 11 years in 2013 so with the vanilla version you can literally only play through the batman part and you know there's nothing wrong with that like it's still a complete game on its own but it, you know when it, like the catwoman stuff again it's like it's part of the full experience it's very canon there's a reason that it was included in the launch thing of the game it's intended to be there but for some reason i guess maybe there was like time constraints or something behind the scenes they weren't able to get it on the disc in time but with the game of the year edition not only do you get that very canon you know catwoman content that you know is a part of the main story but then you also get all the other stuff like the Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC, and you're able to play as, like, Nightwing and Robin in the challenge modes, and then you get just all the other stuff. It's, like, the complete definitive version of the game, and it's all on disc, aside from the year one animated movie, which still hurts my heart. Then we got Arkham Asylum and Arkham Origins. Arkham Origins of which being a super, un just, like, I, I don't even know what I want to call this game. Underappreciated? Underrated? Like, it's hard to call it underrated, because it's one of those things where, like, for the people that have played it and know how good it is, they know how good it is, and they don't underrate it, because they know it's actually, like, a genuine masterpiece, but it's just, I feel like it compared to the other Arkham games, it's overlooked. And the thing is, it, right, like, I can't even necessarily blame the fans or anything like that because every time that WB re-releases these games, they only re-release Asylum City and uh, Night. And to a certain extent, I understand it, right? Because that's, like, Rocksteady's definitive canon trilogy, but at the same time, it's like, come on, man, like, 
It's all right, like, just at least give some love to the, like, I'm not asking for a remake or a remaster. I'm of the belief that games never truly actually need remasters or remakes. I, I think that whole conversation is stupid. There is no such thing as a game needing a remake. A game is simply a product of its time, and whether you like it or not, or think it's perfect or not as it is, is completely subjective. But that being said, it would be cool if this game could at least get re-released or ported to the new platforms just so more people can actually experience it. Like, I'm all for that. But as it stands, this is my Arkham Collection on PS3. You know, it would have been nice to just kind of have like a nice clean collection just a nice clean trilogy like that but unfortunately again none of the dlc like not even the catwoman stuff was on the vanilla disc so you know we kind of we kind of got two things for arkham city here but that's cool with me because they do got two completely different covers i prefer the vanilla cover but obviously if i'm gonna play the game i'm playing this version and just in case anybody's wondering no don't worry it didn't take me until 2024 to play these games i played these games years ago the xbox 360 it was just one of those things where it's like hey I love these games, gonna pick them up on the PS3. But with that, that concludes the January section of this. Now we're getting into the February slash March stuff, and yeah, I can't really organize this in the order that I bought everything in, so we're just kinda gonna be going for it. One thing worth noting is that you're gonna see some sticker residue on here, and that doesn't bother me for the simple fact that I just ordered some Goo Gone on Amazon, so once that arrives, I'm going to be Goo Goning all of the games that have stickers on it in my entire collection, and it'll all just be clean and nice. But first things first, going back to the whole Assassin's Creed thing, yes, I picked up Assassin's Creed Revelations. Now you may be looking at the cover art and you know for the super keen collectors out there you'll be like wait you didn't get the version that comes with Assassin's Creed 1 on the disc why didn't you? And that's because when it comes to collecting I'm the type of guy where I want like the first print run or the most just like clean copy imaginable. I want there to be minimal text minimal be it like a minimal anything else even if it comes at the cost of some content I don't want anything saying limited edition I don't want I just want the default most vanilla case as possible and this is the most vanilla version of of Assassin's Creed Revelations that you can get. If you get the other version, there's like a little thing right here that says Assassin's Creed 1 included on the Blu-ray, but if I'm gonna get Assassin's Creed 1, I wanna get a copy of Assassin's Creed 1, which I already do have it on the Xbox 360, but you know, I wouldn't mind double dipping and getting it on the PS3 just cause that's how I am sometimes. You know, when I wanna replay a game, you know, I wanna go back and earn the trophies again or just simply experience it on a platform I haven't played it on yet or just, you know, have it on multiple platforms, why not? But yeah, the Ezio trilogy just, ugh, man, when it comes to Assassin's Creed, that Ezio trilogy, don't get me wrong, I still love the new games, like I genuinely enjoy like odyssey origins valhalla and all that and oh I, I mean mirage you know that was an awesome throwback to the old days of assassin's creed but man when it comes to like that Ezio trilogy and you know even throw like assassin's creed one in there it's just like assassin's creed had just such a different vibe man again i'm not dissing the new games by any means because i absolutely love the new games as well it's just man that there, there was just a certain vibe to it you know what i mean next up we got thor god of thunder and this came out in the era when you know licensed games were still being made we saw a bunch of marvel games at the time we got thor captain america super soldier iron man one and two it says uh x X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition, as well as X-Men Origins Wolverine for like the PS2 and Wii, they were like, same title, but they were a different game, and the Young Cage Edition was the one that, like, you know, was super collectible or whatever, and goes for a decent bit of money. But essentially, this is, like, God of War, except you play as Thor. Like, this game is actually awesome. I now officially own every single version of this game. I own it on the Xbox 360, as well as the Wii slash 3DS, as well as on my iPad and my Nintendo DS. Not, not like, you know, like, the 3DS version. Like, no, there's, like, two different things there. The DS one is, like, more of, like, a 2D cartoonish art style. Like, I don't know, like, I guess, like, beat em up you could call it. That game is actually awesome then the 3ds and the wii version are the exact or the 3ds wii and mobile versions are all the exact same then you have the xbox 360 and ps3 versions which those two are the exact same i know it's like it was again it was that era where it's like you can have the game with the same name but it'll be like different depending on the platform but i officially own every single version of this game and Man, I love all of them. I wish we could get Marvel games like this again, but no, instead we got Avengers, which isn't even available anymore. It's delisted, which I do have that game physically on PS4, which is cool, so I can still play that until the servers go offline one day, and otherwise, as far as Marvel games go, I mean... Sure, we got still, we got Spider-Man still, Wolverine up the line, but it's like, man, I want more games based on, like, the Avengers, too, like, the wider MCU. I love my superheroes. I just, I want more amazing games based on superheroes. Next up, we got Doom 3. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> this didn't happen before I bought it. This happened after I bought it, and it's really bugging me, so I think I'm gonna either swap out the case or just buy a new replacement case entirely. There's, like, a little nick there in the cover art, and yeah, that was my fault. There was a little piece of tape there on the side, and I was trying to get it off, and my, uh, my thumbnail would accidentally went a little crazy. So it's a little nick in the case it really makes me mad, but it is what it is I'm either gonna swap out the case for another one or I'm just gonna order a new one outright But yeah, man, it's doom 3 super underrated game You know when it comes to doom everybody's like all oh, the original doom games and doom 64 and then you know doom and doom eternal But 
Doom 3, I've always I've always been there, you know, rooting for this game. Like, man, someday this game will get the love it deserves. And, you know, we, we've started to see that in recent times. You know, we got, like, the BFG re-release where more people have been able to play for the first time or re-experience it. But, man, Doom 3, it was definitely different, but... I've always loved this game. It's genuinely amazing. Next up, we got Darksiders 2. And one thing you're going to notice is I picked up a lot of Xbox 360 slash PS3 games recently, just trying to like flesh out those collections a bit more because even though looking at my shelf, I do have, I mean, especially when it comes to Xbox 360, I mean, I have a really big collection there. And PS3, like, yeah, that's a really sizable collection too. But it's at that point where it's like, you know, I'm trying to pick up like all the odds and ends where it's like, hey, if there's a game where it's like, it's not that much money and it's something that I've always really wanted to get on this system in particular, whether I've played it before or not, I'm going to get it. And Darksiders, is one of those series where it's like man all of these games are amazing and it's so it genuinely makes me want to cry just how overlooked it is i mean we got darksiders and they try to bring it back with like the war mastered edition on the xbox one and ps4 as well as uh the definitive edition of this game on those consoles as well and we got like darksiders 3 and darksiders genesis which darksiders genesis was such a cool spin on the formula but essentially if i could describe these games they're like 3D semi open world action adventure, slightly hack and slash elements, also sort of like 3D Zelda. In each of the games, you play as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. In the first one, you play as war, and the second one, you play as death. And yeah, man, this game, I always thought this cover was just so cool. You see death there riding on his horse with a scythe, and you know, it's, it even says on the back, like, become death. Like, dude, Darksiders is so sick. It's also backwards compatible on uh, Xbox 3, oh, on Xbox One and Xbox Series X. And the Definitive Edition is also available on PS Plus Extra. So if you have that service, you can get it there. But highly recommend the Darksiders series if you never played it. Amazing game. Next up, we got Homefront. And this was one of those where I was like, hey, man, I want to get in the collection. Because as much as people seem to kind of dunk on Homefront Revolution for some reason, I genuinely love that game. I remember picking it up on my PS4 and be like, man, this is like Urban Far Cry. And I absolutely loved it. So, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, hey, I gotta pick up the original on PS3. And plus, it was only like four bucks. So I was like, yeah, I definitely got to get it there. I, I, the cover looks pretty cool, too. For some reason, you can see the poster in the back. It kind of reminds me of Black Ops Cold War's like cover art for some reason yeah whether you have or haven't played this game or its sequel i can highly recommend them they're genuinely a lot of fun and they they're like i i don't understand why they got dunked on so like specifically the second one the, the first one didn't get dunked on as much it was the second one that did and i don't understand why i really enjoyed it then again i'm the same guy i've said this multiple times before where there's not a single game that i can think of that i actually genuinely dislike like i, I just i have too much respect for video games as a medium and an art form to be critical or to critique them or just be overly negative about games like i just i genuinely love video games so much like i have so much respect for them to where it's a point of where it's like when people try to point out objective flaw I, god that's a whole conversation for another day i can't stand when there's like these journalists and reviewers and critiquers online like i'm gonna give some objective criticism like nobody cares about your objective criticism what some see as an objective flaw i could see as a subjective positive or subjective charm now granted there's very few things where i could say okay maybe there's some ground here like cyberpunk 2077th launch that's one thing where we can say okay objectively speaking that was it was a buggy game but at the same time when it comes to the game itself i looked past that and cyberpunk 2077 whether we're talking about the launch version or as it is now is in my top five favorite games of all time so again i'm the type of guy where i don't look at things as being flaws i just look at things as being unique to a certain game or adding to its charm or just being like a different spin on things that maybe did or didn't come out in the way that the developer anticipated but regardless it's a part of the package and it's a part of what makes the game art in the first place you know because part of art is human error or human mistake or human just you know innovations whether the innovations came out again the way that the developer anticipated or not it's entirely human and that's what i love about video games which is kind of why i'm kind of you know dreading the whole ai future and all that but again conversation for another day but i'm just saying i don't know that's my perspective i just have too much love and respect for video games and i just i i i, I it's literally impossible for me to be negative about them unless there's an objective flaw like again a buggy launch or egregious monetization next up keeping with the theme of underrated slash overlooked games which is definitely going to be the theme for a good handful of these yet we have rage now this game is available on the ps3 and the xbox 360 it is also backwards compatible on the xbox one and series x and i also do believe that it is available through game pass over on the xbox but if you don't want to play this game you could also play its sequel which is available through ps plus extra and for a time was available through game pass i do not believe it's on game pass anymore but again it is available on ps plus extra if you have that subscription i would highly recommend playing both because they're both absolutely amazing games but if you just want to play something a bit more modern or if you just want to get a feel for 
for like how things were and or how things are now and then go back to this one you can't go wrong either way like it, it you don't need to follow the story that closely like they explain basically everything you need to know at the beginning of rage 2 but basically this is like a first person shooter first person action slash like kind of like semi-open world game as you can see on the cover right there it says from the creators of doom and quake and right there, I think that says enough. I'm not going to say any more about the game. I'm just going to say that if you do decide to play this game or its sequel, again, you can't go wrong either way. It's, uh... Man, it's it's one heck of a game. Both of them are. Next up, we got Brink. Once again, one of the and believe it or not, this game was actually published by Bethesda. And this is again one of those games where it's like, man, I don't understand why this flew below the radar. Cause I remember playing this back in the day on the Xbox 360 when it first released. I had a lot of fun with it. Though while I, I won't lie, I did kind of fall off of it after a bit. It was just one of those things where I was like, hey, I was playing Call of Duty at the time, so if I wanted my FPS fix, that's where I went. And that's that might be part of why this kind of just, you know, didn't take off in the way that maybe Bethesda was expecting because this was in the era of like mw2 mw3 black ops 1 so you know we had all that stuff out at the time but basically this is almost like man how do i even want to ex ex describe this it's almost like call of duty meets siege i mean that's like a really bad way to explain it because if you've played this game you know it's not really like that it's just more or less like the objective aspect of it like uh you know in siege how sometimes you gotta like defend or escort a hostage or you gotta like defend or defuse a bomb or you gotta like you know be the one setting off the bomb it's sort of like that and it's also a bit more fast paced like call of duty not super fast paced like some of the new call of duties like uh, the new modern warfare 3 for example where you're like you know running and slide canceling and all that but it's definitely at the same pace as something like black ops 1 i'd say where it's a bit more realistic it's a bit it's a bit weightier too the game also has a super unique art style i've always loved the art style like the characters and stuff it's sort of like an animated style but also like semi-realistic at the same time the shooting feels pretty solid furthermore this game is also free to play on steam so you don't need to get it on xbox 360 or ps3 to play it. you can just play it, like free to play on steam and uh i don't know how the online servers are doing either on the console side of things or the pc side of things nowadays for me when i played it i would I, I literally just got it to play through the campaign again because this game does have a full single pl uh, single player campaign which honestly i got a lot of enjoyment out of it i literally binged it in a single day because it is not that long there's two sides of it uh it's it's one of it's one of those games similar to some like mortal kombat versus dc universe if you play that before where it's like you play as one side of the story and then you play as the other one but there's like unique events depending on like what side you play on unique cutscenes unique areas unique missions and all that and yeah this game overall was a lot of fun again whenever i played it or play it to this day i'm usually just diving in for the single player but you know I, i'm sure at least on the pc side of things since it's free to play there's probably some players over there but again at the very least if you can't find them there's always a single player to play and i highly recommend this game goes for pretty cheap on any of the consoles or super super literally zero dollars on pc if you get it there so yeah definitely gets a recommendation for me next up we got borderlands 2 on ps3 i mean do i need to say anything about this game it's borderlands 2 i mean it's it's like one of my favorite first person shooters i mean that goes for the entire borderlands series borderlands 1 2 3 i mean tales from the but even though those games aren't first person shooters like tales from the borderlands new tales from the borderlands i absolutely love this franchise this world even the spin-off games and expansions like the tiny tina's assault on dragon keep and then yeah uh, wonderland i can never get enough of these games and i'm hoping borderlands 4 comes soon next up we got xcom and enemy unknown now i know a lot of people are more familiar with this game because of xcom 2 because xcom 2 was definitely more popular at least it seemed that way compared to the original but XCOM Unknown is the first game in the series, and then there was also an expansion called XCOM Enemy Within. If you haven't played these before, I guess I would describe them as being, what, tactical or strategy games? Uh, I guess, I guess like, strategy RPG. Basically, you're gonna be, like, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. So, you, like, uh, you're basically, like, controlling different characters across the battlefield, kind of, like, trying to get them to certain objectives. Uh, it's, think of it like Mario and Rabbids uh, Kingdom Battle or Sparks of Hope, if you played those games on the Nintendo Switch, where you're gonna be, like, trying to, you know, you tell them to get into cover and then there's an enemy and then it'll give you a certain percentage of your chance to hit that enemy it's like hey you know is it gonna is it like 50 percent? is it 80 percent? and i've had times where it says like hey you have like 90 percent chance of hitting an enemy and yet it just the shot will still miss again it's kind of hard for me to try to explain it but i mean yeah the game is genuinely a lot of fun and if you're into again something like mario and rabbits i would definitely recommend checking this out or if you enjoyed xcom 2 you'll definitely enjoy this or enemy within tons of fun goes for pretty cheap and yeah definitely an overlooked slash underrated gem and it's published by two K before the era where all of their games had monetization that went for about like four times the game's value. Speaking of 2K, they're finally bringing back Top Spin for the first time since like 2011, and I'm just scared for the monetization in that game. Like I enjoy a lot of games published by 2K. In fact, the next one we're looking at is also published by 2K, but it's just like, man, why why is the monetization so egregious in their games sometimes? Next up, we got a pretty infamous one, Duke Nukem Forever. I never understood why this game got so much hate. This is another one where it's like, man, I really enjoyed it. I mean, sure, after waiting for so long for a Duke Nukem game, I mean, 
I mean, I don't know, but at the same time, I mean, I feel like it's almost like cyberpunk syndrome where for after waiting for so long and after so much hype has been built up, like no matter what they released, nothing would have satisfied the fans. But I don't know. I just like I, I like I've tried reading reviews and watching videos and I just don't understand their criticism. Again, I never really understand any criticism towards video games, though. Like every time I'm watching a reviewer or a critiquer or reading something and they're like trying to be critical or point out flaws in a game, I'm just kind of sitting there like okay but like i don't know it's just it's it's always so opinionated but then again that's just me i've always just had a lot of love and respect for the medium so it's hard for me to really be negative about games at all i just take games at face value for what they are and just fall in love with them and enjoy them and have fun with them for what they are yeah dude nuke them forever man this game man, this is one of those games where it's like it doesn't matter what's going on in my life what year it is just i i can always pop this game in and be like hey you know I, you can beat this game in however many hours you can definitely get it done in a day and it's just like you know you just have a Fun time. I've always loved games like Duke Nukem and like Serious Sam and stuff where it's like it's sort of like those Quake slash Doom type games but the main character is so much like grit and attitude. I just I love it. Next up we got Destiny for the PS3. Again one of those games where yeah it's available on PS4 and Xbox One but at the same time the online is free on PS3 so you know, if there ever comes a point where it's like, hey, for some reason, you know, like money's really bad, inflation gets the best of me, I can't afford any of my bills for my online services on my other consoles, or hey, I got an endlessly replayable game on my PS3. I mean, I already have plenty of endlessly replayable games on my PS3, but you, you know, you know what I mean, like an, an endlessly replayable online looter shooter. I mean, at the same time, I also have Borderlands 2 for that, but I don't know, I just, I wanted Destiny on my PS3, okay? It was only $4. Next up, we got Gears of War 1, just one of those games where it's like, you know, I, you gotta have it in your Xbox 360 collection. There's not much that can be said. I've poured hours into this franchise, and, you know, even with, like, the most recent entry, Gears 5, when that first came out, I played that game like crazy. I still dive in from time to time. I just, I love Gears of War. Next up, we got Battlefield Bad Company. Now, the main reason that I picked this up is mainly just because it was delisted, because for a while, I didn't have to worry about owning it because it was available through, like, EA Play on xbox one so i was like okay i'm good but then they delisted the game so i was like well shoot so i went to my local game shop and it was there for five bucks and man let me just tell you for between this game and the second game the campaigns they feel like battlefield but it's just they're so i don't even know because they still have this element of like you know the militaristic realism and all that but they're also just a bit more lighthearted, a bit more laid back you get to really like fall in love with the goofy characters and stuff like that if you've never played the bad company campaigns both one and two i highly recommend both of them definitely play them in order like you don't have to but it'll just like help you i don't know i guess get even more connected to the characters if you play the first one and then go to the second one they're not that you know that long either battlefield it's sort of similar to like call of duty or something like that where like the campaigns aren't too long but they're a lot of fun the whole way through but yeah, the Bad Company campaigns, oh man, there's so much fun. It's really a shame that 2042 didn't have a campaign. I, again, I've always really enjoyed the Battlefield campaigns. Like, I have a lot of fond memories of Battlefield 3 and 4's campaign. And Battlefield Hardline, for those of you that have played the Hardline campaign, you know how fun that one is. Next up, this is one where it's like, yeah, there's so many ways to play this game nowadays, whether it's through PS Plus Extra, whether it's on the Switch, whether it's through Xbox Game Pass, or just whatever. I, it was there for three dollars and it's like dude it, it, like <laughs> skyrim okay it was three dollars i was like dog i i just i gotta add it to that collection of course like again there's so many ways to play this game but it's it's like it's three dollars and plus i'm the type of guy where it's like hey if there's a game i love i want to own it physically because we've learned so just you know very well recently that when it comes to digital ownership well, you don't own anything. 99.999% of the time when I'm buying games, it is always physically. I can't remember the last time that I bought a digital game. The only games that I buy digitally are the Call of Duty games, simply because of the fact that I game share with my stepdad. So, you know, I get them digitally, so then he's able to get them as well. Otherwise, yeah, I'd also buy those physically just because, you know, I don't like buying things that I don't actually own. And finally, we have yet again an all-time classic, Final Fantasy X. What can I say? It's Final Fantasy X. I still gotta get X-2 in the collection, but I love Final Fantasy the entire series there's not a single game in the series or the spin-offs that i don't like you know I, I know some people again try to give flack to strangers of paradise i really enjoy that one final fantasy type zero you know what, what i such an underrated spin-off in the series love that game and when it comes to all the mainline ones even the mmos absolutely love all of them and final fantasy 10 i mean such a beautiful like look at that cover i, I know there's some goo, there's some goo up here again the goo gone will take care of that but man just looking at this game just brings me so much joy. Almost, it, it literally makes me want to cry just because of how happy this game makes me anytime that I've played it. So, um, 
yeah, lo looking forward to diving back into this one for sure. But anyway, that is all of the recent game pickups that I picked up since like the end of January slash early February up until now. And since I've been going out retro game hunting with my mom a lot lately, uh, I'll try to do these maybe at least once a month if there's interest in this, of course. Now I'd love to hear from you guys. Did you guys see anything here today where it's like, hey, I never heard of that game before. Or maybe there's just some games in here where it's like, hey, I wanted to pick that up a while ago and maybe I reminded you of it. Just whatever it is, whatever thinking, I would definitely love to hear from you guys. I was getting ready to do the Patreon shout outs because I always do those at the end of the video, but I forgot we did that at the beginning of the video. So we'll just kind of wrap things up here. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.